Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vice is a fly that I don't have a name for. It was given to me by Euros Christian when I was out fishing in Slovenia and it proved very effective on the day. I've even started tying up several for my own boxes. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vice then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This one's at size 10 and it's on a fine wire and finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify. It's nano silk at 50D or 12 watt, and as you can see, it's a black silk. So, as always with the nano silks, a little touch of super glue onto the shank. Uh, sorry, my super glue's starting to uh, congeal. Now the cooler weather's coming. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't run like it used to. I might need to get a new pot actually. But uh, anyway, that aside, let's get a bed of silk onto this sh hook shank. Now I'm going to come all the way down to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook and then I can come in with my snips and just remove my tail end. Now I've got some uh, deers hair here, it's been dyed black as you can see and what I want to do is just pick out half a dozen fibres from the edge here which is going to make my tail. Just pull that away and I'm going to try and even up the fibres just in my fingertips. don't know how well you'll be able to see. Uh, and that's good enough for government work. So I'm going to take the length of the shank and then tie it in like so. There's no need to stack the tail fibres, there's so few it won't make any difference. So I'm going to just lift up the waist here, remove that and then I can come in and just tidy that up a little there. Now as I come back down I'm going to catch in my wire ribbon. I'm using some uh, 0.1 millimeter silver wire again it's from Simplify and I'll just take a little bit of that off. I don't know what happened to the piece I had prepared. It seems to have wandered off my bench. But I've got this bit. So I'm going to catch that in just at the front there. And then I can come all the way back. Now, this fly was so effective that uh, it was the only fly I used, dry fly anyway, I used out in Slovenia. Uh, other than the retirer, which uh, did score for me, but this was the the go-to fly that the guide suggested that we we use. Now, before I go any further, I'm just putting a little bit of beeswax onto the thread, and the reason I'm doing that is the body of this fly is uh, black seals fur, or uh, I think they call it black claret. This one and. As always with seals for it can be a bit of a bugger to actually dub onto the thread. So the wax does help with that. You've got to work quite hard with your fingers to get it to adhere. Make sure it's nice and... There we go. So you've got a nice rope and then I'm going to come around the body now you've got to leave an incredible amount of space at the front of this fly. So I'm going to stop there. As you can see, I've got a whole third of the shank still showing. And uh, that's not an accident. Next, I'll bring my rib around. Uh, when I've done these in various... Uh, I've started doing them in 12s and 14s. And... Uh, it depends on how many tons of the rib you want. By the time you're finished... It's, it's inconsequential almost because it's covered by the remainder of the dressing. So I'll get two or three turns over the wire, two or three turns in front. Keeping tension on the thread, just twist your rib away. Now, before you go on to the next point, it's worth coming in with your bit of Velcro or your brush if you've got a Velcro brush. But a little strip of Velcro does the same job. And just tease out some of that body dubbing. And that's looking not too bad. 
Now, before uh, I tie in my wing, I'm going to get just a little bit more wax on here. Wax is your friend when you're dealing with deer hair and seals fur. I'll come all the way back to there. And again, I'm going to take some uh, of the dyed deer hair and prepare that by cutting about a centimetre off, putting it in the stacker, giving it a good rattle on the vise, and we've then got all our tips married up. Now, I'm going to take that out with my left hand, and I'm going to show up to the body of the fly. Now I don't want my wing coming past my tail. So that looks about right to me. I'm going to change hands because uh, I know that I'm going to tie it in at this point here. So over my waist bin I'm just going to get rid of the waist. Now start with the deer hair towards your body. Now as you pull your thread round You'll see it start to display, come in between the fibres. And as you start to tie this in tighter and tighter, what happens is the deer hair will pull round over the top of the shank, sitting directly on top of the body. I'll just check that's the case. Yeah. And what you've got is a nice, neat deer hair wing. Okay. So, we're going to go back to our cock cape. Um, now, I haven't got a nice long generic cape, so what I've got to do is pick a feather from the side of the cape and I'll just prepare that by stripping away the bottom part and leaving myself a nice little stock to tie in. Now, I'm going to grab that and tie it in on my side. So excuse the fingers, nice and tight, you don't want it coming out as you're turning it. And the next ingredient is again back to our seals for. And I'll just add a little bit more wax to the thread. You don't need much to cover this small section, just a little. I've maybe got on too much, but I can always take it off as I get near the bottom. Ah, it's worked out just grand, actually. So, we've got our seals fur on the front, and what I'm going to do is bend my hackle, just so I can get it to come out at a 90 degree angle. Then if I can find my hackle pliers in the midden that is my tying desk, I'll catch the tip in. And what I want to do is get nice, tight hackling on the front of the fly. It really was an effective fly. The fish in the, uh, the Sotchia really seemed to switch on to the, the black colour. And uh, what Euros was telling me is that he has them in various sizes from 10 uh, down to 16s. So I'm going to busy myself uh, getting a, a few of these in my box in the different sizes. Uh, I, I can see them working here, not only on the rivers, but on the, on the reservoirs. Now I've removed my hackle pliers, but I've still got my tip here. I'm not over, going to be overly worried about that. Now I've released my bob bobbin to expose my thread. Now to finish, I'm going to come in with some UV resin, put a little coat on the thread, then I can slick everything back. And the reason I like to use the UV resin is, especially with dry flies, and finish it like this, is what I don't want to do 
is coming with varnish or whatnot afterwards and catching my fibres whereas this will finish them and of course don't forget to take away your excess feather that will pull right off and as always with my dry flies what I do when they're finished on the vise I, um, I just coat them in some of this and, and then they go in the box so when it comes to fishing time I'm not wasting my time applying gink and stuff and because it's dried into the body of the fly it tends to float for a long time before it will need any TLC from you when you're fishing which is ideal and there we go I'd like to thank Euros for the pattern and I hope you got something out of it